Howdy friends, welcome back to Let's Play Jade Empire. This is episode number 57, and uh, I picked a pretty good stopping point because it's been about two weeks since I've last played, just been really busy, but we are back now. Um, I guess that's the way forward onto dirt. No, we just came back that way, okay. So we have already been teleported to Dirge, and the only way to go is up. Of course, this isn't the real Dirge, this is like the spirit world version of Dirge, which I guess means places in the spirit world kind of have analogs to places in the mortal realm, at least some of them do. At least Dirge does, because it's obviously the bridge to the spirit world, as we've been told. Gem of Premonition. So apparently, even though we can't find loot here, we can still find gems. Um, don't really want that one, though. And while we can't access our followers, of course, Zin Boo is always present because ah, he is also excellent. a spirit. I have many items just waiting for you. Looks like some of these are new. Um, not sure any of them are really worth buying, though. So let's start by leveling up, and that should heal us up as well. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to keep putting more points into spirit. Maybe if we have like double the points in spirit as we do in mind, I'll put more points into mind, but for now, focus doesn't seem to be much of an issue. 24 style points. Awesome. Um, let's see. Leaping Tiger and Crimson Tears are maxed out. Stone Immortal. I could have longer stuns. Spirit Thief. I could have more speed. Um, what about Storm Dragon? Duration or speed? So I could do 10, 6, 6. That's an option. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. And then I'll put 6 points into Storm Dragon. Um... And we will save the other two. Alright, so uh, we are now on chapter 5. However, we're really kind of. Whoops. Demon's great. We are actually getting um, fairly far on in the game. The last three chapters I remember being fairly short. So, in a way, you could actually say we're kind of in the end game now. And I believe horse demons are immune to magic. However, I am not. Yes. All right, worth checking. What about spirit thief? Yep, immune to that as well. I really hate horse demons. I'm sure they feel the same way about me. All right, let's heal up a bit. Use up some of that chi. Oh, that's right, this guy. the mark of the water dragon upon you. You have returned! Except I'm dead, so returning in this case is not really a good thing. Are you Abbot Song? I am the spirit of Abbot Song, slain many years ago by the glorious strategist. Before my death, I was the head of the spirit monk order. Your order. The glorious strategist? You mean Master Lee? Master Lee? He is Sun Lee, the traitor. How out of balance the world has become when one of our order believes Sun Lee to be his master. You are a spirit monk, 
born here in dirge and cleansed in the sacred fountains. You were an infant the day the Emperor and Sun Li attacked our monastery. I tried to save you from the slaughter, only to lose you to Li when he ripped you from the arms of your dying guardian. Yeah, so obviously Master Li told us one version of events, which is uh, much different from what actually happened. He wasn't trying to save me. He was, as he did say, the head of the Imperial Army, and the Imperial Army was assaulting Dirge. Li claimed he was the one who saved me. I can only imagine what lies and distortions he told you about Dirge, your heritage, and his own role in events here. But now, you deserve to hear the truth. Thirty years ago, the long drought struck the land. For a decade, crops withered and died. Starving people across the Empire demanded that something be done. Despite his position, Emperor Sun Hai could not alter the natural order. He demanded that his brother, the glorious strategist, concoct a plan to rectify this insult. Through Sun Li's cunning, the armies of the Emperor laid siege to the gates of Dirge. They came to seize the Water Dragon's power and her life-giving waters. How did he defeat the Water Dragon? The soldiers of the Imperial Army swarmed over us, too many to count. My spirit monks fought bravely, but I knew the battle was lost. We were beaten. All around me, my fellow spirit monks were dying. I tried to hold the attackers at bay. Prince Kin attacked me, and then Master Li cut me down from behind. The Emperor ascended unopposed, but already Sun Li and Prince Kin plotted against him. The glorious strategist was not content to watch his brother come to power. Emperor Sun Hai, ruler of the Jade Empire, stepped beyond his station and slew the Water Dragon. Claiming her power for his own. His brothers tried to strike him down, but they could not know he would be so strong. Infused with the water dragon's power, he was now unbelievably powerful. Sun Li escaped with his life, but he left his brother, Prince Kin, to suffer the Emperor's terrible vengeance. A spirit monk child still lived. He killed your guardian. Claiming his identity, no longer a servant of the Emperor, Li abandoned his fearsome armor to become the master you thought you knew. If you and the Amnet were the key to defeating his brother, he might still claim that power. Li disappeared with you and the amulet, escaping the Emperor's retribution. With his newfound power, the Emperor is a taunt to his traitorous brother, bound kin spirit to the armor Li had left behind. And Death's hand was born. You were the last of the spirit monks. Sun Li saw our attempt to save you as confirmation of your importance. He believed you were meant to restore what he helped steal. He trained you to be an instrument of vengeance, an agent to succeed where he and Prince Kin had failed. But with your death, the Emperor is now invincible. I defeated the Emperor, then Li betrayed me. Then the glorious strategist has won. You were the last of the spirit monks. 
But now you are just a ghost like the rest of us. No one is left to oppose Sun Li. The water dragon said you would help me. You spoke with the water dragon? Of course! Only she could guide your spirit to Dirge, while all others must wander the mortal world. I worried that our last hope had died with you, but now I see you have come to restore the fountains of Dirge. The first step in restoring the water dragon herself. As leader of the spirit monks in life, I am bound by honor and duty to aid you in this task. I swear, I will not abandon you until the Fountains of Dirge are restored. So that's something I didn't really notice before. When he says that the Water Dragon called me to Dirge, that's the same thing she's supposed to do for all of the Lost Spirits. But uh, as we know, because she doesn't have her power anymore, the Emperor did and now Sun Li. Um, that's why all the ghosts are wandering aimlessly. But during that brief moment, while power was being transferred, she was able to send me here. Which is kind of cool that that's, that's her job, so she was able to actually do it for at least one person. And uh, now it's up to me to make sure she can do it for everyone else. I am honored to have you with me, Abbot Song. I can guide you here in Dirge, this lost home of yours. I know the monastery well, and will do everything in my power to help you restore the fountains. And how do I do that? The fountains were tainted with human blood, which shattered their seals. The blood that stained them is gone. Replacing the seals should restore them. I want to ask you some questions. I know the monastery well. If there are questions you wish to ask in your quest to restore the fountains, I will do my best to answer them. Do you have any advice for me? Only that you should do as the Water Dragon asked, and try to restore the Fountains of Dirge. Uh, we already asked that. I know. I want to know more about my amulet. The amulet is an artifact of great power, though few truly understand its nature. What do you wish to know? I saw Lee take it from me. How can I still use it? The amulet is a powerful tool, but it is only a tool. When you were first learning to unleash the power within you, the amulet helped you to focus your mind and energy. But you are a spirit monk. The power of the water dragon was always in you, not in the amulet. Now you are strong enough to draw on that power without the amulet. If the power was mine, what does the amulet do? It is a tool and a focus. It allows you to understand the power you can wield, and to use the essence gems that so many discount as trinkets. We alone can draw on more than one gem at a time. You can do this, even without the physical amulet now that you know your true nature. So Master Lee has the amulet, but he's not a spirit monk. Does that mean he can only draw on one gem? I suppose it doesn't really matter, but I always assumed that once he had it, he could use it to draw on as many as it can hold. Uh, same with Grand Inquisitor Gia. She obviously was using one gem, and she only had a piece of the amulet, but I suppose one was all she could use as well. If the amulet is only a focus, why did Lee take it from me? You no longer need the amulet, but Lee has a use for it. Lee's brother, Sun Hai, consumed the water dragon's power, but without the amulet, it was a long and slow process. Even after twenty years, he was not strong enough to defeat you. Had the Lotus Assassins brought him enough pieces of the amulet, he would have been far more powerful. That explains why they wanted it so badly. But Sun Li has the amulet, making him far more dangerous. With it, he can draw on the Water Dragon's power much faster. Unless you stop him soon, he will become invincible. 
so that doesn't explain why a piece of the amulet was in the Lotus Assassin Fortress and not with the Emperor. Um, maybe he could only use that piece if the main piece was also found, the piece I had. But uh, Or perhaps the Lotus Assassins had just discovered it and had not yet presented it to him. I think that would probably be a little more believable. Um, already asked that, I'm pretty sure. Why were the pieces of the amulet scattered across the Empire? I did not want the amulet to fall into the hands of our enemy. When I realized the battle was lost, I shattered it into several pieces. I gave the pieces to my apprentices and told them to flee to the farthest reaches of the Empire. The core of the amulet was given to the young monk who fled with you. I knew the core alone would be enough for you to start discovering your true power. But anyone else would need to find all the pieces to use the amulet. Makes sense. Why is it so powerful? The amulet is a powerful tool. Yeah, we already asked this. You... Alright, something else. I'm curious about the spirit monks and dirge. I would be honored to help you learn more about our order and your legacy. You said I was born here at Dirge. Many of our order were brought to us as children, orphans we raised to serve our great mistress. But a few children are born here at the monastery. Both your mother and father were spirit monks. You were born right here in Dirge and bathed in the sacred fountains, mere days before we were destroyed. Both your mother and father died in the attack, along with the rest of us who served the Water Dragon. What were my parents like? It's kind of surprising you don't meet them here. Shouldn't they be ghosts as well? That's, I wonder if some of the spirit monks who died before the Water Dragon lost her power, were they able to travel beyond? Like, Abbot Song wasn't, even though he died before the Emperor got to the throne room or the portal room or whatever it was. But uh, maybe his spirit just hadn't made it there yet. They were good people. Their love for each other was matched only by their devotion to the Water Dragon herself. Had they survived, you would have been raised here in Dirge. They would have instructed you from birth in the duties of a spirit monk. It is a tragedy you never knew them. Yeah, but I think uh, my character's current life is a little more exciting than it would have been otherwise. What did the spirit monks do, exactly? We served the Water Dragon as her guardians and protectors. We saw to the needs of her physical form, maintained Dirge, and honored her with worship and prayer. Is that all? We also served as shepherds for the dead. Most spirits came to Dirge in time, but sometimes a spirit was unable or unwilling to leave the mortal world behind. We would seek out these lost spirits. Those with unfinished business or those who had suffered traumatic deaths would need our help to reach Dirge. But now that the Water Dragon is gone, none of the spirits can find their way to Dirge. And those already here are trapped. The portal to the afterlife is sealed. Uh, tell me more about Dirge. Also, that sounds like a pretty cool um, idea for the Order of uh, the Spirit Monks. Kind of like Jedi a bit, or kind of like Ghostbusters, I guess. They would travel. They would mainly stay at the temple and guard the Water Dragon and serve her, but they'd also go out on missions to uh, help lost spirits and uh, finish up their unfinished business. Tell me more about Dirge. Dirge is a place between. It exists in both the mortal world and the spirit realm, and it leads to the underworld itself. It is a bridge between life and death. Once it was a holy place, but now it is defiled. 
Dirge has become a place of great evil and corruption, a corruption that has been growing for the past 20 years. Um, I guess I already asked both of these. Uh, I think we should move on. You are probably right. We must restore the Water Dragon's power before Sun Li gains full command of her powers. Alright. That's enough talking, let's get going. After we read our journal. Now we have a quest. Abbot Song has joined you. He told of how the Fountains of Dirge were corrupted by his fellow monks, allowing Sun Li and the Emperor to overrun the temple. You must defeat the Guardians, and then restore each of the fountains. This will restore some of the Water Dragon's power, so she can restore you to life. That's right, I don't think they mentioned that. He kind of alluded to it, but um, I'm not sure where I heard this from, but some of the spirit monks betrayed them, betrayed the Order, and uh, tainted the fountains with blood in order to bring down the spiritual defenses so that the army could get in and kill them. Find and destroy the Guardians and restore each of the fountains. Alright, so I only remember this a little bit. I did see a scroll, so let's equip, um, that's plus 9, plus 12, oh, that's not even equipped. Oh, do we have, no, still just 7 slots, one of which is empty, but okay, let's get rid of that one, and we will equip. Where are you? This one. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, and that one. All right, much better. I'm assuming that all of these things we kill count as spirits. I guess the demons could still be demons, but we don't have a gem of demon XP, so this will have to do. The Ritual of Binding. The ability to bind a spirit is one of the great honors that the Water Dragon has bestowed upon us. Therefore, we must always remember to treat this gift with the proper respect. When you bind a spirit, you become the guardian of that spirit. It is as though the spirit is your child. Though it is your duty to return the spirit to the Water Dragon for her judgment, until you give the spirit over to her, you are fully responsible for that spirit. Since the spirit will obey your every command, you must always have the best interest of the spirit in mind while it is under your control. You must never command a spirit to do anything. That might affect the Water Dragon's judgment of that spirit later on. And though it is the most common rule when binding spirits, I will repeat it again. Under no circumstances will you ever bind the spirit of a living person. Such acts are punishable by death and judgment at the hands of the Water Dragon herself. So that's a useful skill for somebody in our profession to have. Um, and it might explain why I'm so good at fighting spirits. But uh, the forbidden part at the end is apparently what the Emperor did once he stole the Water Dragon's power. Um, actually, that kind of explains why they could use the amulet as well. If they have the power of the water dragon, and the spirit monks are special because we are bestowed gifts by the water dragon, that makes the emperor and now Master Lee kind of like the ultimate spirit monk. Um, so by having even a bit of that power, I would imagine they could use the amulet to its full abilities. And um, that's what the emperor did when he bound Prince Kin's spirit to Master Lee's armor and so created Death's Hand. The spirit of a living person. Yay, XP. Here's one of the fountains. Let's see who's guarding it. Trying to turn on um cheese strike. I feel like I'm doing less damage now. Maybe these enemies are just a higher level. Oh, 
I'm petrified. Great. Come on. Yeah, I'm gonna turn off cheese strike mode. Is that not my chi button? Alright, we're not doing so well. These guys are actually tougher than I thought. They look just like humans, but they are uh, quite powerful. Okay, I'm going to need to block some. Jeez. Because they all have magic and they all have... So he has an AoE with Tempest that seems to be immobilizing me. Stay away, stay away. Yeah. As long as he's in health too, and he's kind of fighting the wrong guy. Watch out, watch out, dodge. Alright, we gotta start doing some damage here. So I would like to switch to swords right now, but obviously swords don't affect ghosts. All right, one down. Of course, so is Abbot's song. Come on. We do have a lot of focus, actually, so I could use that, or I've used that. These guys are harder than uh, Grand Inquisitor Gia was. All right. A tough battle, but we have prevailed. The guardian of this fountain is destroyed, and I weep for her. She was once one of our order. But lured by Lee's promises of wealth and power, she betrayed us. Ah, so that's where I learned it. Should have just waited. This woman was once a spirit monk. This thing is the corrupted spirit of Xiang Wu. During the attack, she and several other spirit monks betrayed us by tainting the holy fountains with human blood. Long before the attack, Lee sent spies to bribe some of our weaker members. When they tainted the fountains, the power sustaining us against the army vanished. That's why he's the glorious strategist. What happened to Xian Wu? After the battle, the Emperor executed Xian Wu and the others, and he used the power of the Water Dragon to bind their spirits to the fountains. I don't understand. How did he bind their spirits? The binding is a sacred ritual of the spirit monks. We can draw on the power of the water dragon to bind a spirit to us. It is one of our tools for shepherding the dead. Even before Dirge was befouled, there were ghosts in the world. Some spirits would become lost in their journey here, or refuse to let go of the mortal world and go mad. If we found one of these restless ghosts, we could bind it to us and bring it to Dirge. Then, we would release the spirit, 
so the water dragon could lead it into the afterlife. So the emperor did this to Zan Wu. The binding is a great gift from the water dragon, if used properly. But the power can be abused. The emperor bound the traitors not to himself, but to a place. A spirit can never escape such a binding. It feels an inexorable pull, but it has nowhere to go. It feels a compulsion to obey, but is never given a command. That sounds horrible. The spirit twists and corrupts, and in its agony it goes mad. Binding a spirit to a place is a terrible crime for our order. The only thing worse is binding a living creature. Is that how Sun Kin was bound to Lee's armor? Does it have that kind of power? Binding the living condemns them to a fate worse than death. It forces the subject to obey and robs them of their free will. As a spirit monk, you must never do such a thing. The ability to bind spirits comes from the essence of the water dragon inside you. You may not have the power now, but one day you will be able to call upon it when needed. But this is not the time for lessons or instruction. The Guardian is dead, but you must place the seal on the fountain for it to be fully restored. All right, Dirge Fountain Seal and quite a bit of XP. And voila, the fountain is restored. I think there are three of them, two or three. It worked! The fountain is restored, and the gates to the inner courtyard have opened. Or is that the only one? There are maybe more inside the inner courtyard. Alright, well, I've yet to encounter a... Uh, um, a spirit font. Hopefully there'll be some ahead, because we are a little low on health and chi. Well, mainly chi, but our health isn't in great shape either. Um, but we will have to do some more exploring next episode. I'm going to uh, take a break here, and when we come back, we will head to the inner courtyard and continue to restore dirge. Thank you all for watching. See you in a bit.